Riot decided to buff uh, Gregors on this patch and this champion became absolutely broken. Like but now he is so, so strong, broken as fuck. No clickbait. It is clickbait, but at the same time, it's accurate clickbait. So, yes, um, you must play this champion. If you guys don't play this champion, you are not abusing a free elo pick. Hey, what's up guys? Dark Wrecker here and welcome in today's tier list. It's gonna be for the new patch 3.3b and before we're starting, uh, let me introduce you guys to today's sponsor. It's gonna be the new Red Magic 7S Pro phone. The Red Magic 7S Pro is the new flagship model from Red Magic. I have been sponsored by them for a long period of time and they have been producing absolute amazing gaming phones on the market. What better sponsor than a gaming phone for a mobile mobile channel? Let's quickly run through the amazing features of this phone. 6.8 display, 120 hertz, 5000 milliampere battery, 65 watt fast charging, up to 18 gigabytes of RAM. IC 10.0 cooler, 960Hz touch sampling rate. They also have a gaming mode feature where you can control every single performance setting, which is absolutely crazy because you have control about everything you want while you're playing. Make sure to check out the link down below in the comments to buy one of the best gaming phones on the market and thanks to Red Magic again for sponsoring this video and let's hop right into the tier list. Okay, let's get started. Um, quick introduction. Um, for you guys who are new to the channel, I'm a challenger player and I'm a legend player ranked 2 right now in the European um, leaderboard. Um, just, just so you guys, just, just to give uh, this tier list a little bit of credibility um obviously uh this is my personal opinion um mainly about high elo but i will mention low elo picks as well where i think okay this champion is really good in lower elos for example a master yi um is really really strong in lower elos and like i said since this is just my personal opinion it's an orientation for you guys um I'm gonna give you guys my personal opinion about each champion, why I think they're good, why I think they're not that good. Um, talking about the skill level of each champion, uh, how easy they are to play and how easy they are to play for you. For example, we have Garen, who is pretty easy to play. Uh, so it's a, it's an easy champion that you guys can uh, start to learn or to begin with if you guys want to learn the Baron lane. And there are other champions like maybe uh, Aurelia, who is much harder to play. But yeah, before we're starting, also make sure to leave a like and subscribe uh, for this tier list if you guys enjoy it and you guys don't want to miss out on uh, any future videos. Like we have Samira and Sion coming up soon, so obviously uh, I'm going to make gameplays for them plus um, yeah, guides for those two champions as well. So that's going to be really interesting, but now enough talking um, and let's get started with the Baron Lane tier list. So... Hey, Riot decided to buff uh, Gregors on this patch and this champion became absolutely broken. Like, for real, um, I don't know, I think I've uploaded the Gregors, new Gregors uh, tank build and this champion is way, 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 way too strong right now. He was already a solid S tier champion on a lot of positions. You can play him in the jungle position, in the baron lane position, in the mid lane position, but now, um, also support position, but now he is so, so strong, broken as fuck. No clickbait, it is clickbait, but at the same time, it's accurate clickbait. So, yes, um, you must play this champion. If you guys don't play this champion, you are not abusing a free elo pick. So definitely try out Gregor's for yourself. And yeah, Gregor's Baron Lane with Grasp. Wait, let me change it. Grasp. A very strong hot pick right now. Absolutely broken. 
Um, his lightning phase is super super safe. He still does a lot of damage, and then later stages he pretty much becomes unkillable. And his cooldowns on the abilities are super short, so uh, way too much sustain, way too much crowd control. I think I had like a forty second crowd control during that game. Um, just spamming crowd control over and over and over. So very uh, amazing pick. Like even in lower elos, it doesn't matter because uh, in the end. You still do a lot of damage uh, thanks to his base stats. Um, I would say he's pretty easy to play as well. Just some mechanics with the ultimate or with the barrel, but overall, um, not that hard to play and a very strong champion with not that many hard counters. I think he does super fine against most champions in the Baron lane. Next one is gonna be Wukong. Wukong also received the buff on the second ability. Um, but the main reason I'm putting him up in S plus tier right now uh, is because he's in high elo. In high elo, uh, he has become one of my favorite Baron laners because he has such an amazing laning phase uh, with Divine Sundra, with Grasp, with the first ability. You have so much sustain that it's very hard to push you out of the lane. He has a super safe lane against most champions, so you can first pick him and uh, majority of the time you can do fine against most matchups. Plus... Hey, in team fights, he's also really, really strong thanks to his ultimate. So therefore, I'm actually moving him up. He he was ST before, in my opinion, but I changed my opinion. Um, I guess if you're playing in lower elo, maybe he's just S tier, but in high elo, he's definitely S plus tier, especially in legend rank. Um, sometimes there will be champions where I'm extra mentioning that I think in high elo or in legend rank. They are very, very good, and then maybe in like solo queue or in lower ranks, they might be one tier uh, lower, but in the end, they're still a strong pick. Whether they're S or S+, plus, hey, it doesn't make a big difference. Next one is going to be Jax. I think he is one of the best Baron laners right now. His, uh, his laning phase, surprisingly, is so solid right now after the, the changes they did on all of his base. Like, they buffed the base stats, they buffed the... Um, Third ability and second ability or something like that. Like they buffed so much on Jax that his laning phase with Grasp is super solid, and then later on he becomes one of the hardest split pushers to deal with. Plus he is a really solid team fighter actually because he has the third ability that can do AOE stun plus soak up damage. The ultimate gives you resistance and he has the dash. So his team fighting is actually. Really not that bad for um, a split pusher and it, now with the demolish buff as well It makes it easier uh, for you to uh, split push plus the meta is kind of better for split pushers right now because they nerfed the elemental dragons uh, They may they also make it easier for you to um, take the turrets Plus demolish got buff so split pushers are actually better right now or split pushing playstyle where the jungler, jungler plays around the baron lane is also better right now Next one is going to be Jace. Jace, one of the strongest lane bullies in the game, in the Baron lane. Um, a very, very strong pick with Hallbreaker or with a Bruiser build or with a full Glass Cannon build. He can do a lot of damage and also be a decent amount of tank, uh, decent tanky. So uh, in team fights, he has the poke value and uh, in the side lane, he also has a really solid split pushing factor. Uh, overall, very solid pick and one of the best lane bullies. Not that easy to play though. I feel like I, I also need to play Jace more. But in the right hand, when you know how to uh, space uh, space yourself against the lane opponent and abuse the range factor, then you can absolutely dominate most matchups in the early game. And in the mid game, you're also very strong. Now next one, Renekton. A pretty easy to play champion, I would say. He, he has... Very strong laning phase, is a strong duelist, great at team fighting. He has a double dash, he has a stun, he has the ultimate that makes you super tanky. So overall a very complete pick where you have team fighting, you have split push, a slash dual power, and you have decent amount of gap closing abilities. And he's super tanky as well with the ultimate. So very complete pick. Like, you have some picks that have, like, they are more teamfight orientated. Then you have other picks that are, like, more duelist or, like, more split push uh, playstyle. And then you have Renekton, who uh, covers uh, pretty much everything. So he's a very, very solid pick. 
That's why I consider him S plus. They also buffed him and he does so much damage. Like the moment you have Bog and you're ahead, hey, Bog with uh, Rage, you just pretty much do 50% with one ability. Now next up is gonna be Riven. Um, I feel like in, in lower slash mid elo, she is much better than in high, high, high elo. I think she's better in the jungle right now, but uh, overall she is still an amazing duelist. Um, she also has a lot of damage plus mobility and sustain. The only downside is like in super high elo when I'm, I'm talking about like legend Q level, legend Q level. Um, you have the downside that a lot of team compositions are like super high mobility poke compositions and they have a lot of crowd control. So it's um, really hard to pull, out, pull, out, pull off a Riven if you don't have enough frontline. Because she is not really that tanky. I mean, obviously, she's not the main frontline, so you need a frontliner if you want to play her. But yeah, I think in anything, like if you play Master, Diamond, Emerald, etc., or even lower elos, Riven is a fantastic snowballing champion. Is uh, like You can easily snowball a game, and then you have, you're so strong in teamfights as well. So only downside is like in peak high elo, uh, she will struggle. But I mean, I think majority of my viewers... Um, I think uh, uh, I guess around Emerald Elo, so I think she's absolute amazing pick, um, and also super fun to play. Camille in the right hands, absolute beast. This champion is an amazing duelist. She's also an amazing team fighter, because she has the second ability to poke people down during team fights, which is kind of underrated because you actually have decent amount of poke value, and then you have the ultimate to catch people. Plus, you have so much mobility with the third ability. Um, overall, I love uh, Camille. I think she is one of the best high elo picks in Baron lane, uh, and even in like lower elos, I think she is more than uh, more than fine. Set amazing uh, team fight uh, base champion in the lane. He does fine as well, but he shines the most in team fights because he has so much crowd control. Like you have the third ability to stun multiple people. You have the ultimate um, to knock multiple people up. And then you have the second ability, uh, which does AoE true damage, which is crazy, and you can soak so much damage. So overall set a very strong Juggernaut. And now next one in the line is Darius. He's also a Juggernaut, a very tanky bruiser that also does a lot of damage. Yes, basically the ultimate does true damage, and the moment you have Noxus Might is... You have Noxus Might, you get one reset, you can turn the team fights. Like, even if you're behind, he's very similar to Katarina because he's like one of those reset champions. You get one reset and you can wipe the whole team if you play it well. Downside is definitely if you play against like hyper mobility team compositions that have a lot of uh, jump abilities or dash abilities and they have crowd control that can kite you away. Um, that's the downside on Darius. But I think in. In any, anything like, if you're below Master, Darius is definitely a 1 vs 9 champion. He is absolutely amazing. And even in high low, I think he is in the, if you pick him into the right team comp, he is still really, really strong. And even if you pick him uh, against like a high mobility team comp, you can just run Ghost and Flash. Instead of like Barrier Flash or Ignite Flash, you can always run Ghost against mobility uh, compositions. So yeah, great. Great carry potential. Like, in this list, this champion has absolute fantastic carry potential. Especially in lower ranks. Next one. Fiora. Hey, Fiora, I think she's a great duelist. Uh, one of the best early game bullies in the lane. Um, absolute crazy scaling. Does a lot of damage. But I feel like the downside is her team fighting is not that amazing. And right now the meta a lot of times is about uh, having to join team fights because of the elemental dragons. So in this department, a Jax is for example better because the Jax scales harder, pushes turrets quicker, and is better in team fights. But yeah, as a duelist, as a split pusher, Pyrrha are really strong. Next one is gonna be Garen. Garen is a very beginner friendly champion. If you guys want to play Baron Lane and you're starting out trying to learn Baron Lane, I definitely recommend you guys to play Garen because he is a very tanky champion that still does a lot of damage and he can hold his own pretty decently in, um, in the lane against most champions. Plus, 
here's the ultimate, the execution ultimate to just uh, kill steal, uh, kill steal or secure kills. So I think a lot of um, a lot of people will love this place where you're just pressing the ultimate and just get the kill. Next one in the line or in the list is gonna be Malphite. Malphite, a super tanky champion that does decent amount of damage, is great pick against heavy physical damage team compositions. He has the ultimate to knock multiple people up, and his laning phase is honestly super, um, super solid against most AD champions. The downside is if you play against Sunra champion, um, that is gonna split push like a Jax, like a Fiora, like a Camille. Um, you will probably not be able to hold them, and then you might not be able to join team fights since you're gonna get outscaled. That's the downside. Next one is gonna be Aurelia. Aurelia, a high skill ceiling champion. You need you need to master this champion to make her work. She has a lot of hard matchups in the Baron lane, but she has amazing one vs nine carry potential if you have mastered this champion. Next one, Chen. Shen is a tanky champion that is a decent duelist at the same time, has decent amount of crowd control with the taunt, has the global ultimate to join teamfights, which is absolute amazing. Um, downside is you get outscaped by Sandra split pushers, yes. Um, at, the, at the same time, since you are a tank, you kind of rely on your teammates um, to perform well. Like, if, like you can go 8-0 on a Shen, but if your teammates are bad, you will never win the game. Unlike uh, a Jax, for example, or Camille, champions that can actually carry the game even if your teammates are behind or Darius. That's why I'm just gonna put like I think in the in the tier list you will guys will see later on a lot of tanky champions. I I will not put them as plus tier because they don't have the the insane carry potential that I wanna see from the champions that belong into the S plus tier. And tanky champions are great, yes, sure. But they also rely on the teammates to do damage later on. You can land a 5-man ultimate on Malphite for example. But if your teammates are bad, you will still not win the game. That's the issue about tanky champions. While other champions like Bruisers, they ha still have the potential to carry games. The, the, the um, Gragas. Yes, Gragas is a tanky champion. But at the same time, he does a lot of damage. The, I'm... I've played this champion a few times with a tanky build, and I had still the most damage. You're not gonna have the most damage as a Shen, by the way. <laughs> Unless your teammates are really bad, but you're still not gonna carry. Kassadin, yes, Kassadin got nerfed. But Kassadin is honestly a very broken champion. He's just broken. Honestly, even against melee champions or against AD champions. Cleat footwork, second wind, ruby start. You do more than fine, and you are one of the... Hardest scaling champions in the game and your 1 vs 9 potential on Kassadin is way too strong. Plus, you guys can also try out the tank Kassadin build um, that I've uploaded or that I'm gonna upload pretty soon. Next one, Grace. Honestly, I'm gonna move Grace down. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't think Grace is that hot right now. No one plays this champion. And I feel like, yes, you are annoying, you are like a split pusher, but you need so much farm to make him work. And in teamfights, you are not that great. Like, you need you need to AFK farm the whole game, and then you become strong. It's a champion that can bully against certain matchups, but at the same time, I feel like the value you provide in a game is not that great. Because you are so busy AFK farming to get to the power spike, that you're strong enough to join team fights or you're strong enough to win the lane. I'm actually not a fan of this champion. I never like I don't think I've I've played 200 legend queue games this season and I don't think I've ever seen a Baron lane grace so far. No one plays this champion like <laughs> It just isn't that good in this meta right now where um either you are like a split push god or you are very good in teamfights as well. Or you have the, like the right balance. Now Nasus. Nasus has a similar issue that um, he has a... I think a lot... He struggles against a lot of matchups in the early game. Plus his farming is not as good as it used to be. With the Q uh, cooldown increased. 
And then on top of that, his playstyle is really counterproductive with Elemental Dragon, uh, Elemental Dragons right now. Because you need to AFK farm in your lane a lot of, like, a long time, for a long period of time, you just need to focus on farming and scaling. But by that time, you might already have lost the game because your teammates are too behind and um, you didn't join the team fights. <laughs> I mean, yes, Ness is like one of the best scaling champions, obviously. But you need to get the point. You need to get to the point where you reach the power spike, where you're strong enough in the lane and strong enough to join team fights. Timo is a strong early game lane bully, and um, later on in team fights, he has the value with the new shrooms right now. So um, honestly, he's not that bad and really underrated. Because no one plays this champion, and only a few uh, people know how to, um, yeah, do a good wave management in the early game and harass the like, make sure you're actually hard lane bullying the opponent and snowball, get the lead, and then from there on try to farm up, try to get some nice flanks with your invisibility, and then set up the shrooms. Like, the moment Timo has, like, three or four items, his teamfight value is actually really good if you can set up shrooms, because you will do so much damage uh, prior or prior to the teamfight even starting. Okay, Nautilus, received the buff. I don't think the buff actually matters too much for the Baron lane, because uh, I think it's the hook. The hook animation and the ultimate animation time got uh, lowered. Overall, a really tanky Baron laner. Um, that provides a lot of crowd control, uh, but I think he will struggle to kill any champion, to be fair. Like, the whole thing is, like, you try to clear the wave, and then you join a teamfight and try to, like, very similar to a Malfight, but a little bit weaker. Mundo. Mundo is a decent duelist, and uh, he is, like, he's basically a super tank. Like, you're soaking up a lot of damage in teamfights. And his dual power is actually not that bad because you have, um, you get a lot of AD when you're low life. And you're super tanky at the same time. So it's hard to kill a Mundo. And then Mundo is just basically a frontline. But that's also the, the downside of him. He doesn't have that much crawl control. Um, yeah, he doesn't have that much crawl control. And you rely on your teammates to do damage as well. It's the same, it's the same problem for a lot of tanks. That's the, that's the downside of playing tanks in solo queue, the reliance of your allies to do damage. You can have a great game, you're winning your lane, you are 5-0, you're doing absolutely fantastic, you're joining team fights. you're soaking up a lot of damage, but if your ADC is 05, you will not win the game. You will just not win the game. That's the downside of playing tanks. Okay, Akali. Akali is a decent laner, struggles against a few matchups. Um, high skill ceiling, I would say, but her teamfight value is absolutely fantastic and she does a lot of damage. Jarvan is a tanky champion that uh, does overall pretty solid in the laning phase, has decent amount of poke, but in the end you will get outscaped by a lot of bruisers. Um, but to be fair, you have insane amount of teamfight value with your knockup, with your ultimate, with your tankiness. Now, next one is Kami Akshan. Akshan is a very strong lane bully. He is a range marksman that has great uh, mobility with his heroic swing to escape gangs. So, if you pick him into the right matchup, you can bully the lane opponent super hard and try to snowball. Um... The only downside I see is that he's super squishy. Yes, he can avoid ganks with he heroic swing. But let's for example say you're against a Camille and the enemy jungler is a Lee Sin, Evelyn or Kha'Zix. You will die and they can punish you super hard. That's the downside if you play a ranged marksman. But yeah, overall, um, I know for example Random loves to play Akshan. And Akshan into the right matchup is a really, really strong a lame bully. Better than, for example, Vayne and Lucian, that are, uh, I would say, they're squishier and easier to kill, since Akshan can also run Heartbreaker. I mean, obviously, Heartbreaker is getting nerfed, but Heartbreaker and Akshan is not, uh, honestly not, um, 
Nah, you... Actually, I think he doesn't even run Hullbreaker, to be fair. I think he's just running on hit build on uh, Akshan. But his mobility is better. It's harder to kill Akshan in compar uh, comparison to a Vayne or Lucian. Um, same concept, same explanation, but they uh, they have a weaker... I would say Akshan has a better laning phase than a Vayne, for example, and she is easier to kill. While Lucian has a shorter dash, but his uh, early game is also strong, to be fair. But Vayne's 1 vs 1 dual, dual power is better, so it kind of evens out. But I think Akshan from the range champions uh, excels in comparison to Vayne or Lucian. Same explanation. Next one, Diana. Diana is honestly not that bad in the 1 vs 1. Um, might struggle against a few matchups here and there, but she has absolute fantastic teamfight value. Uh, next one, Cannon. Cannon is a strong lane bully with fantastic teamfight value, but he's gonna get outgate by a lot uh, by a lot of matchups where you won't be able to hold them in a one vs one anymore, and then um, you will also not be able to join teamfights. I think if you play against a Jax, against a Camille, against a Renekton, a Cannon can't do anything. Like in the early game, sure you can do you can do fine. Try to zone them, but later on, beyond level five or beyond level eight, you have no chance anymore. Pantheon early game super strong. Um, mid game, late game, he falls off. If you don't win the game before ten minutes, you will struggle a lot. Like that's, I always say the same in the say in the tier list. Yes, he can be fantastic at snowboarding the game. If he gets a first back early on with the ultimate, he can rotate and catch people and snowball. And then you uh, want to win the game pretty early on. But if you don't, then Pantheon just falls off because, um, yeah, he doesn't have the best scalings. It's it's the same explanation. It, uh, it doesn't change. It just doesn't change. So if it, uh, it kind of repeats in comparison to other tier lists, it's it's like the same explanation because this champion was untouched. Like, uh, he, he didn't change at all. Olaf! Olaf is a kind of situational pick. He can be a great counter pick against certain uh, matchups because he has true damage or against certain team comps that rely on crowd control. But at the same time, he is a kind of snowbally champion where you need to get the lead in the early game. And if you don't, he kind of falls off. And he will struggle against uh, matchups like a Fiora, um, I guess a Jax as well. Against a Camille as well. Uh, yeah. Next one, Trinomare. Trinomare really underrated. I think he's a solid laner. Um, solid laner slash split pusher. Uh, in the early game, he might not be the strongest, but he scales super well. His ultimate is very, very good. Only downside uh, I see is, like I said, the early game and certain matchups. If you play against uh, Jax, how it counters you. A Malphite, you will struggle in the early game because you can't do anything. Um, a lot of matchups are hard uh, for Trenomere. But late game, you are an absolute split pushing beast. And even in teamfights, you're super strong. If you have like Ghost Flash, 3-4 items on Trenomere, you just run people down. And then you have the ultimate uh, where you can't be killed for like 5 seconds. Kale! Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Kale. And the reasoning is that... Um, her early game is trash. Her early game is very, very weak. She is super squishy, has a lot of hard matchups. Plus, she's very easy to dive and punish. And um, if a jungler camps you, you can play the game. The game is done. And then you need to play that your teammates are doing well at least. And then you somehow get uh, level 15 and then you can get strong. But yeah, that's the biggest issue. She is just too scaling and too weak early game. Singed. Singed, honestly, um, he struggles against a lot of matchups and he is weak in the early game. But he has great teamfight value, he has great pickoff potential and he is absolute fantastic scaling. Vayne Lucian, I already explained how they're working. Uh, kind of weaker than Akshan, but overall still okay to play. But yeah, let's move on to jungle. Okay guys, jungle. Wukong S plus tier. This champion is one of my favorite junglers in Legend Rank, especially in high elo. I think he's an absolute fantastic pick. Even in lower ranks, I think he is great because what does he have? He has a lot of damage, 
Um, he has decent amount of mobility. He has great team fighting value, and his one vs one against other junglers is also solid because he can dodge abilities with this clone, and then he can return on them, and the first ability gives him uh, tons of sustain. Uh, in general, his team fighting with the ultimate is just fantastic, and now with the second ability buff. Um, it's gonna make it easier for him to jump over walls and find other gank angles as well. Olaf, one of the best 1 vs 9 carry champions. This champion just runs team compositions down that uh, have crowd control or rely on crowd control for the peeling. One of my favorite 1 vs 9 carry champions, um, especially against like lower ranked people. I think if you're playing in lower rank, Olaf is an absolute fantastic pick. Definitely play this champion. Amazing jungle clear speed as well and very good carry potential. Camille, S plus tier, because she is one of the best scaling uh, junglers right now. She does a lot of damage, she has great team fighting value, she has good split pushing value if you guys want to, and, and mainly her ganks are crazy. Like if you, like they lowered the cooldown of the ultimate and now um, you just spam gang. Every time you have an ultimate, uh, every time you have your ultimate up, you can find a free kill. Like you just jump ultimate, boom, free kill. Jump ultimate, free kill. And her playstyle might not be that easy to execute in the early game, where you are not the strongest in the early game, but you just poke people down with a second ability. And then if you get level thirteen or you just farm up enough level uh, till level thirteen. Your damage is crazy with the first ability true damage because then you will do 100% true damage on the first ability. Riven, a high mobility uh, jungler that does a lot of damage, is uh, strong in the early game and is absolute fantastic in team fights. Echo, Echo is a champion that I would say is not that easy to execute. You really need to understand how to play this champion correctly, use the second ability correctly, use the ultimate correctly, and try to focus on farming, because this early game is not the greatest, but he has one of the best scaling. So if you can um, farm up safely, if you can uh, scale, get three items, then um, Echo becomes one of the best team fighting champions that can just one-shot uh, any champion, basically. Like, you jump onto people and you just two-tap them. Kha'Zix got nerfed, but uh, I think the 10% isolation nerf won't change how strong this champion is. Because he is one of the uh, best ganking junglers that has insane amount of damage and crazy carry potential. Same for Lee Sin. Lee Sin is one of the best early game gankers. Is super strong because of his mobility and damage and carry potential. Shivana got nerfed. I think it definitely makes the itemization of going Trinity and Blade of the Rune King not as good, and her jungle clear is a little bit uh, slower. But Shivana is still fantastic. Um, like before they nerfed this champion, she was 100% broken and 100% amazing at carrying games in lower ranks. And I think the changes were. Not that big that uh, it changes her positioning. I'm gonna slightly move her. Like by the way, the positioning, uh, the positions, uh, don't determine. Like the positions don't really say who's the best jungler. By the way, uh, but I just wanna. I am in this case. I put Shivana a little bit weaker because she got nerfed, and I'm not hundred percent sure if she's deserve. I mean, she probably still deserves it. Like the changes are not that uh, drastic. Like. Um, if you play a good playstyle where you're just focusing on farming instead of um, ganking and you only gank, like do counter ganks and just focus on farming, 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 she can still carry games super, super hard. She still does a lot of damage and still, she still becomes super tanky. Okay, next one. Sin Chao is a strong uh, tanky bruiser, great ganks, good damage, overall super solid team fighter. Jarvan, one of the best high elo um, junglers, especially like at spam ganking, provides a lot of utility with his tankiness and his knockups and the ultimate at the same time. Morgana, one of the best uh, junglers in terms of jungle clear speed. She is super fast. She provides a lot of utility and poking damage, but she is not necessarily the typical hyper carry jungler. The next on the list is Nunu, a very similar playstyle like Jarvan and 
Leeson, where you're trying to spam gang and try to snowball. This champion is also super tanky and provides a lot of crowd control in team fights. Evelyn! Evelyn is a fantastic snowballing champion thanks to her invisibility, can snowball super hard at any elo, but especially in lower ranks where people play too overextended against her invisibility. Evelyn is fantastic. Vi. Vi is a tanky bruiser that does a lot of damage, has really quick jungle clear speed and has the first ability as a gap closing tool and the ultimate to catch people. Graves. Graves. Uh, I still think he has great carry potential if you can farm up. Um, doesn't have necessarily the best ganks. But the, the main playstyle of Graves is to just focus on farming up. And then the moment you have like 3-4 items, that's when the power, uh, power spike is uh, kicking in because you're building a crit build. And then Graves becomes super strong and he just 2 taps people and just uh, out attack, first ability, ultimate, boom. That, 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 that. But yeah, his playstyle is definitely kind of slow, similar to a Shivana playstyle. But uh, Graves is not that tanky. Like a Shivana, where Shivana can just jump in uh, the moment she has like four items, uh, 400 stacks, and she just runs people down. Aurelia, a strong bruiser with great carry potential, does a lot of damage, has a main, amazing team fighting, and tons of sustain. Jace, um, I, I, I think Jace doesn't have the greatest gank potential, but he has a lot of damage, and he is really solid with his poking damage in team fights. Nautilus got buffed. I still think because he is a tank, he's not gonna be S plus yeah. He's I I still think yeah Nautilus is a great jungler because he provides so much ut utility and his ganks are devastating with the passive, which is a root, the first ability you can hook people, and then the ultimate, you can knock up people very quickly right now because they reduce the animation time for the ultimate and for the first ability, but at the end of the day. If your teammates are bad, you can't do anything. If your teammates are bad or not, you can't do anything. It's crazy. You need teammates that can do damage and teammates that follow you up. Otherwise, it's a doomed. It's doomed. Set! Set is a champion that I think is pretty solid overall in the jungle. His ganks are not, uh, not necessary uh, that crazy because he relies on reaching people with the third ability and he kind of needs setup from... Uh, someone else to uh, root them or stun them first. But his team fighting is pretty strong and his jungle clear speed is okay. Um, Pike in the jungle, I think, kinda underrated because he has crazy ganking potential. Like the whole th uh, the whole point of playing Pike is snowball the game, rotate left and right, and spam gank. Rengar. I think Rengar in lower elos is still fantastic. I think in higher elos, he's definitely not that strong anymore. And the main reason is they nerfed him too much that he he doesn't do as much damage as he used to do. Like his crit build is... Uh, uh, if you play crit build, you're really squishy and you don't have the crazy one-shot potential that you used to have. And even if you go for Bruiser build, it's not as easy to pull off um, a Rengar in high elo, for example. Because a lot of times you play against high mobility or um, crowd control compositions and Rengar really struggles. It's an, it's not that easy to pull off a, a Rengar in higher, higher ranks. I, I think in lower ranks uh, definitely he works, but in higher ranks it's really hard to pull off a, a Rengar. Oh, I forgot to move Kragas. Wait, why did I have him in A? What? Oh, it's the old one. Huh. Um, I think if you play Gragas in high elo, like super high elo, he might be S+. Plus. But I think in any other rank, he is like S tier. Because his playstyle is kind of uh, a very poking, stalling playstyle, which might not work in lower ranks. Because you like if uh, you have a team fight, you want to kite and poke them out. Very similar to Morgana, you kite and poke them out. But Gragas damage is crazy run. Uh, ah, guys. 
Like, the thing is, even b before he got buffed, I was spamming Gragas in high elo and had so much success with Gragas. I think I was one of the first who was spamming Gragas in high elo in legend rank. And every time, the the Gragas pick was so amazing, but I don't know if he's, like, that good in lower ranks as well. Obviously, now with the buff, you have tons of damage, you're very solid in the early game, you have great ganks with the dash, with the ultimate to pick up people. In teamfights, you're fantastic and uh, you are one of the best scaling champions as well. Insane poke damage, insane one-shot potential. Should I put an S+, plus dear? Honestly. With the buffs? More healing, more damage. He's actually cracked. I'm just saying, okay, let's let's do it like this. I think if you play in very high elo, he can he has the plan potential to be S plus tier, but in general I think he's a strong S tier. Sounds sounds fair. Sounds fair, right? I think that's more than fair. Oh I just remembered something. Wait, did I edit this video yet? I have a fist gameplay. I have a fist gameplay against Leon that I forgot to do. Wait, did I wrote this down? No, I didn't. Fist. I have a fist jungle gameplay that I never uploaded. Yeah, true, I forgot. Fizz, honestly, he's not bad. His early game is kind of weak, but his, like the moment you have three items, he has crazy one-shot potential and carry potential. I honestly think he's really underrated, not gonna lie. His early game, kind of scuffed. Not that bad, though, to be fair. Like, I, I don't think you should go... I think he's a champion that definitely relies on just going for full clear. Just go for full clear. Get level 5, and then with level 5 you you have decent gank potential if you land the ultimate, if you have good aim. And the moment you have like 3 items, your your one-shot potential is... Boom! So you're not... Wait, delete it, delete it, delete it. Actually, crazy. Hmm. Okay, next one is gonna be Pantheon. I think Pantheon is a strong early game jungler. It's the same explanation, like for the Baron lane. Um... But I think in the jungle he's better than in the barrel lane because um, you don't rely on facing an another champion one versus one way getting outscaled. While a pantheon has really good early game and really good uh, carry potential, like snowboarding carry potential. I think in lower ranks pantheon can be a, a very very good pick in the jungle. Actually, I think in lower ranks he works way better than in higher ranks. So, a. A good A tier, can snowball games. I think it's more than fair. Next one is gonna be Fiora, strong duelist, not the greatest gangs, but her skirmish power is really, really good in the early game. And the moment you're scaling, you have like three items, he becomes really fantastic. Next one, Darius. Darius in the jungle, kind of underrated. I think he's not that bad at all. He has great carry potential in team fights. Um, decent gank potential with the proto belt and with the hook. Proto belt hook, you can catch people. Or flash hook, you can catch people. And uh, like I said, Darius. Why do I um, like Darius? His carry potential in team fights, even if you have bad teammates or even if you're behind, is fantastic. One reset to rule them all. <laughs> One reset to rule them all. It's gonna be the same explanation for Katarina, by the way. Um, Diana. Early game, not that good, but in team fights, fantastic. Super, 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 super strong. Ramos. Honestly, I think the main reason I think uh, I'm moving this champion up is... There's one player that I'm facing in Legend rank all the time. <laughs> all the time. He's like a Ramos one-trick pony. And he is in the top 10. I think he is almost top 10 le uh, leaderboard in Legend. I, I'm not sure why this uh, why this pick works so well. I'm not sure. He's a like I think he's a very situational champion that can um he's a situational champion that works absolute fantastic against physical damage team compositions. If they have like four damage dealers that are only physical damage, Ramos is I think it's because he's such an amazing counter pick. He's a great counter pick into certain team compositions. I always tell you the downside of Ramos is his, ju uh, his slow jungle clear speed and his lack of gold. But his utility factor and his tankiness works really well in high elo. Tanky champions 
work really well in high elo because you 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 have good you have better teammates that can carry you and you can just uh, provide tankiness and utility. The issue is though in lower ranks. I feel like in lower ranks, a champion like Ramos doesn't work as well. I think, okay, in high elo, in high elo where you can rely on your teammates more and you pick this champion as a counter pick, or even in lower ranks if you pick him as a counter pick, A tier, yes. But if you play him like a standard in, let's say, in Emerald or something, I would just say B tier. I think he is B tier champion. There are so many other fantastic champions that can carry games better than a Ramos. The main issue is like your GPM on Ramos is pissed low. Your GPM is pissed low. You rely on snowballing in the early game, and if you don't, you will always fall behind. Yes, you have value in team fights, but the downside at the same time is you rely on your teammates, and you can't rely on your teammates in solo queue. Remember this, guys. The only constant factor in solo queue is you. The only constant factor. And Ramos is a champion that's not constant or not consistent. Like, you you need teammates. At the end of the day, you need teammates. So, I like champions that have great consistency. Champions that have great consistency overall, even when your teammates are bad. Do you guys understand that? Because some people will say, yes, this champion works. Look at wild stats, etc. First of all, pick rate matters. Secondly, when do you pick this champion? Like, there are Ramos one-trick ponies that only pick Ramos against certain team comps where he excels. That's why he gets good win rates against those team compositions because they're 5 ADs. They're 5 ADs. Of course, the Ramos is gonna work then. But if they don't have 5 ADs and you're against some magic damage team compositions and you have bad teammates, oh, guess what? And you play against a um, strong scaling uh, champion that is also good in the early game. Let's say mm, you play against Olaf. You play against Shivana. Olaf is gonna shit on you, he can invade you, and he will fuck you up. A Shivana will outscale you so freaking hard. Let's say you, you have a GPM of 650 or 600 to 700 as uh, a Ramos, but the Shivana will have 900 GPM, have 5000 more gold than you, and she will just carry the game on her own if you don't snowball hard enough. That's the issue, my friends. Next one, Jax. Scaling, mm, I don't know, I don't know. Um, it, the, the main issue about Jax is, yes, he has a fantastic late game scaling, but his early game and his farming in the jungle after the passive nerf is honestly not that good anymore. Next one, Master Yi. I think Master Yi is a insane pick in lower ranks because of his reset playstyle and his snowballing factor. I think... If we just look at, let's say, bronze, silver, uh, gold, emerald, emerald, maybe diamond, this champion can be S tier. Yes, can be. But if we look at the higher ranks, if you play against junglers, that um, if you play against junglers, that will invade you. If you play against harder jungle matchups, if you play against good jungle players, a master he will struggle. The main reason uh, is that Master Yi is a champion that relies so much on snowballing. This champion relies so much on snowballing. And there are so many team compositions where Master Yi will struggle against. But yes, if you snowball as a Master Yi, he can become one of the most cracked champions. Yes. Especially in lower ranks. If you are a much better player than them, you can just farm. Bop, 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 bop. <laughs> you will see my... You will see my Master Yi video, I got like 30 kills in uh, Emerald Elo or Emerald Diamond Elo. I got 30 kills on a Master Yi because this champion is a fantastic snowballing champion in lower ranks. But I think in higher ranks the champion is really really bad because people will know how to stop him. Because crowd control, crowd control fucks Master Yi super super hard. Next one, Singed. Since jungle of super cheesy, super cheesy jungle pick, I think in the early game she uh, he is not that uh, he's not that good. His jungle case be kind of scuffed, but his team fighting value, his scaling, and his catch potential fantastic. Trust me on that one, and really fun to play. Honestly, you use the second ability, you then you pro to playing bam easy. Let's go. Next one is gonna be Shen. Um, Shen is a champion. 
Um, that I think is honestly pretty solid because of his taunts and his ganks and the utility he provides in team fights. Plus, he has the ultimate. You gank on one side and then you use the ultimate and you join the other side. So you can gank uh, two lanes at the same time. So that's really cool. Uh, jungle play speed is decent, but his scaling and the reliance on our allies is the issue that I see on a tanky champion like Shen. Amumu, I think he is decent. His jungle clear speed is decent. Um, his team fighting with the ultimate is strong. The downside is the his vulner vulnerability in the early game, where you can get very hard punished by other junglers. That's the main problem. And at the same time, oh, I actually have a really cracked Amumu gameplay. Maybe you shouldn't underestimate this champion that much. I went for a hybrid Amumu build, where I have a lot of damage, I can also soak a decent amount of damage. Plus, the ultimate of Amumu got lowered, and his ultimate is pretty good in team fighting, especially for elemental dragons. His ganks are decent. But I always feel like if you play against a good jungler, like I was playing in, I was playing in Emerald ranks, so obviously I can make uh, him work as... I mean, I'm smurfing an emerald. Obviously, I'm going to make this champion work because of better macro as well. But let's say I play Amumu against a good jungler. And this guy is playing a Lee Sin, a Kha'Zix, uh, an Olaf, Sinchao, or something like that. They they will destroy me. I can't play the game then. That's the thing that I'm... Th like... You, you guys need to factor in if you play against a good jungler that invades you and punish you at scuttle etc it's it's gonna be painful guys yeah obviously if i play if i play amumu in sm in on emerald as a challenger player then i can smell off definitely but i feel like if you play like you are this skill level and you play against another jungler at this skill level and you plays an aggressive jungler i feel like you just always struggle in the early game and you can get punished super hard but yeah his team fighting can be good that's why b b is solid guys b is solid he's not broken he's not absolutely amazing but he's a solid jungler if you guys want to go for a tanky ap jungler and you want to play the emo the emo mumu go for it why not you can you can make him work like we we have seen like if you're ramos otp there is a ramos otp who's like top 15 in legend rank and you can also make a mumu work it's not like i'm saying this champion doesn't work this champion isn't good i'm just saying I feel like there are other champions that are easier to play, but if you love this champion, if you like to play this champion, why not? Go for it. Uh, I, that's not um, the point of the tier list. It's just giving you an orientation what I think is good and what I think is easier to play. And what I think is strong right now. Doesn't mean this champion is complete shit and you should never play him, by the way. Next one is going to be Trindamere. Trindamere overall a very solid pick. Um... Early game, not the greatest. I think the main issue is like his early ganks are super shit. Um, his jungle clear speed is like average. And main reason jungle, his ganks. His ganks are really bad. But his scaling can be really, really good though. Three, four items, Trindamir. His carry potential. Boom, 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 boom. Strong. Mundo. I don't like anything about Mundo jungle. Bad jungle clear speed, bad ganks, just a meat shield, no damage. Reliance on TA uh, teammates as well. I mean, his damage is okay, but it's not that fantastic. Okay, mid lane. Kasadin, even. Wait, let me put a star. Oh, I forgot to mention. The star. The star means that the champion either moved up within. or uh, got changed position wise within the tier list, or the champion itself got changed. Um, with the patch notes, like they did a change on the champion. So they nerfed Kasadin. Yes, they nerfed the base HP and the HP per level. Um, but it's not enough. This champion is broken as fuck. Kasadin is broken as fuck. And do you guys know why? Hey, base armor, really high. Then silence on the first ability. Then second ability does a lot of damage. And it's like it makes his laning phase super safe because it's range. Then third ability, 
insane amount of damage plus AoE. And then the ultimate does tons of damage and gives him insane amount of mobility. This is one of the best late game scaling champion. And a lot of games are getting into the late game. So this champion, the moment you have 4 items, you pretty much can carry the game on your own. 4 items, you carry the game on your own. You have 5, 6 items, you just 1 vs 9. If you, like, you just jump in, silence, third ability, boom! And then you jump out again, or you just jump in, third ability. Like, if you have 3 stacks on your ultimate and you jump in, third ability, boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. He just nukes you. This champion is fantastic. Like, he's also really fun to play. Like, every time I was out of it, I was trying to play this champion. Next one is gonna be Ari. Ari is so strong in my opinion. Like, if you guys are not playing Ari, then you're doing a mistake. Number one point, Ari is... <laughs> Ari has so much mobility. She has the catch potential with the taunt. She has the assassination potential in the 1 vs 1. And just... Landing one good charm in a teamfight or prior to a teamfight carries the game. You land one good charm, like there's a Baron lane team, a Baron team, a Baron teamfight, or there's a Dragon teamfight. You land one good charm and it hits the jungler, and it, or it hits one of the key targets like uh, ADC or um, the mid laner. You just straight up win the game. Her carry potential and her mobility is crazy. Like there is one player in the legend uh, leaderboard. Uh, he's the top one player right now. It's his name is Kiss, and if he plays Ari, just run and hide because he he just carries every single game when he's on Ari. It's just crazy, man. Ari, I think Ari is. If you guys have the opinion that Ari isn't that good, then you are hundred percent wrong, and you should up yourself. I think the my top two most hated mid laners are Cassidy and Ari. These two champions are so strong. Okay, next one is gonna be Diana. Diana is super strong in teamfights. Uh, she's a great duelist as well. Then Katarina. I always preach you guys. Katarina gets one reset and she wipes the whole team away. Every single game you see one reset or Katarina gets one reset. I'm like, yes, we're winning, we're winning. Katarina gets one reset. I guess we are all dead. I guess we are all dead. Katarina is fantastic. And if you guys are not playing this champion, you should try it out. I think Katarina in the right hands, if you play her well, she can carry most games. Her carry potential and her 1 vs 9 potential is crazy. Aurelia is a super high skill ceiling champion that does a lot of damage, has a lot of sustain and great carry potential. I would say Cassadine it's not hard to play, honestly. Cassadine is not hard to play. Ari isn't that hard to play. But if you're a master on Ari, uh landing the charms with a protobal charm or the flash charm or the ultimate protobal charm or something, catching people, it's all about the charm landing and positioning. Diana also easy to play. Katarina, not that hard to play, honestly. But if you master Katarina, you can excel even more. Aurelia, I would say high skill ceiling to make her work. Uh, and if you're a master in Aurelia, she's definitely S plus tier. Karma, still one of the most broken champions. Insane amount of poke damage. Too much value in team parts. Provide so much utility as well. Gregas got buffed. And I wasn't sure if I put him S plus or S tier. I think a strong S tier is for now more than fine. This champion. Has a decent wave clear, does a lot of damage, and has great catch potential. But I feel like in the 1 vs 1, or as a 1 vs 9 carry champion, he, he isn't on the same level. I feel like he just... If your teammates are bad, you just don't have the crazy 1 vs 9 factor. Like Aurelia, Diana, Kessa, and Keta, and even Karma have like the crazy 1 vs 9 potential. Like, they can always pop off, no matter what, and carry the game on their own. I mean, Grass can kinda do it as well, but I don't feel like to that same extent. I'm more scared to play against Karma, Kessa, Ari, or a very good um, Aurelia, Keta, than uh, Gragas, to be fair. Pike! I think Pike is really underrated in mid lane. Yes, I know they nerfed the wave clear on the third ability, or the damage on the third ability. 
but his roaming and the catch potential and his snowballing factor, especially in the low, I think especially in lower ranks, he is really, really strong if you know how to rotate and catch and just keep ganking left and right, ganking left and right. Yasuo! Yes! Um, I think Yasuo in the right hands is S plus tier, but uh, I think for the average person he is S tier if you play him decently. Uh, if you play him into the right team comp, he has crazy carry potential. Three items, Yasuo is such a strong playmaking champion. You don't even need knockups from other people. If you have knockups from other people, even better. But if you play a good pro to build Yasuo um, with a nice keyblade or airblade combo, you can carry games on your own. Three, make sure to not play too ag aggressive in the early game. Uh, make sure to not int like the typical O10 Yasuo meme. But yeah, three items Yasuo has crazy catch. Uh, like he has one of the best scaling champions. Like it's a crit champion. The more items he has, the the harder he will carry games. Galio, a strong um, team fight champion with a lot of poke. I feel like I'm talking so much. I will end up being two hour video right now. I'm I'm only at mid lane right now. My God. Um, yeah. Galio, great poke damage, great utility in team fights, global ultimate. Akali, um, way better matchups in the mid lane, strong um, team fights, and great assassination. Akshan, one of the best laning phase, a very strong hard bully, uh, insane crit damage, plus mobility, plus the revive in team fights, plus invisibility uh, rotating. Korki, insane team fighting with package. Uh, overall, amazing carry potential uh, with his damage. Um, plus, yeah, like I said, the package is just crazy. Like, the main reason why I think he's so good is the package in teamfights. Then his laning phase is also not that bad. He struggles maybe against a few champions, but overall, pretty solid. Piss, hey, um, very good 1 vs one, one, one champion and great assassination and teamfight value. Like, the moment you have like 3 4 items. If you, if you don't watch yourself, he just one-shots you completely. Next one is gonna be Jace. I think Jace overall a very strong laner, does a lot of damage, has great poke damage as well, and lame bully. Especially if you uh, play against a melee champion. Next one, Oriana Zix, let's summarize them. They are overall uh, amazing poking champions, uh, like, how do you call them? Control Mage. These two are amazing control mages that do a lot of damage and they have uh, amazing team fighting power. Singed. Singed, I think, is still uh, pretty strong. In the early game, he might not be the greatest, but his early game skirmish power is great. He has amazing catch potential uh, and he has one of the best scalings as well. He becomes super tanky and does a lot of damage. Vega. Vega is a fantastic teamfight champion that provides a lot of utility and has strong burst damage. The downside of Vega is his 1 vs 1 is not that good against certain matchups and his roaming power is not that good in the early game because you're focusing on farming and stacking up. But if you have a frontline, like if you have a front to back team comp, Vega is very hard to deal with and in especially in high low vega is super super strong Z, a playmaking split pusher assassin this champion is fantastic in the one vs one and can snowball super hard uh then he can just jump into the backline and assassinate people left and right but uh, obviously i mean even team fights later on in the late game he does a lot of damage to be fair high skill ceiling champion Twister Fate, um, great roaming power with the ultimate to snowball games and catch potential with the gold cards. Lucian overall a very strong champion, he got slightly enough but it doesn't matter too much. He has great mobility and tons of damage. Dude, I need to do this quicker, I'm talking too much. Echo! Echo in the early game kinda weak, uh, has amazing scaling and super strong teamfight value. Brand, um... I think the main reason I put him A tier is... Wait a second. <coughs> oh god. Dude, I feel like my allergy is kicking in lately. Wait a second. 
God. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. Allergy. Um, Brand roaming factor. Uh, kind of weak in the early game, but he actually has really good poke damage in team fights. He does a lot of damage in team fights, but you need the right team comp where you have enough front line for him because he lacks mobility. Yes. Okay, Aurelion is not that easy to play and is weak in the early game, but he has fantastic roaming factor to snowball. Plus, his team fights is really strong for objectives uh, because he can crash the star and stun multiple people doing tons of damage. Annie in the early game, um, I think the main reason I put her AT is because she struggles against certain matchups and her roaming factor is not that good. Um, but overall, she has really decent amount of playmaking potential with the Flash Ultimate or the Protobot Ultimate. God damn it. My nose. Next one is gonna be Garen. Garen over a solid bear. Uh, why is the Baron? A solid mid laner that has. Um, I mean, the main reason you pick him is if you guys need a, a tank or you have a lot of AP damage already, you can just go for Garen. And he's fantastic against melee champions and uh, is a good frontliner in teamfights. Morgana, um, I think the main reason I put her A tier is because she's not necessarily the typical carry champion and she is just mainly there to provide uh, binds. You need to land the binds and just try to poke people down. Pantheon, again, same explanation, early game, a strong uh, snowballing champion that falls off in the mid and late game, but obviously uh, he has great snowballing factor with the ultimate to uh, rotate and gang left and right. Ash mid lane, honorable mention, um, because of Brazil, no, who played Ash mid lane? It wasn't Brazil, Brazil played Ash in the uh, bot lane a lot. Uh... Team Flash, Team Flash from Vietnam, Coyote, played Ash Mudlane and actually popped off with the Ash arrows catching people and honestly, um, her roaming factor is non-existent, her 1 vs 1 is actually also hard against a lot of champions, yes, but if you can catch people, like if you go for ability haste build on Ash and you can catch people with the arrow, she actually has decent value, um, yeah, decent value to just catch people and pick off people. I, I, I actually should just remove them. No one plays these two champions. Rakan AP! Rakan AP! <laughs> I don't know. I guess you have good team fighting and catch potential. I, I honestly have seen a few Rakans that have, uh, have done pretty pretty well. Who was, the, who was the Rakan player at Icons that did really well? I think it was from Buriram, or was it Helios from R2? I don't remember. But uh, in the right hands, it can be a pretty funny pocket pick that actually has great carry potential. Oh, I should move Cannon. Cannon, actually, the reason... I think, I'm not sure if it's the player, I think it's because of Kiss. Kiss has been playing, like, I think his top three champions in the mid lane are Kessa, Ari, and Cannon. And Cannon in teamfights is still pretty good if you play him well. I feel like his early game is not that good uh, into a lot of uh, mid lane matchups, but his teamfight value with the ultimate can be pretty pretty good. Kale, same explanation like for the Baron lane, but uh, she is easier to play in the mid lane because it's not as easy to punish her in the mid lane as in the Baron lane. And she has an easier time to farm up. Lux. Actually, I, I, I'm going to move Lux up as well. Um, Lux, great catch potential. It's very similar playstyle to Ari, but she lacks the mobility. But if you la if you catch someone with a bind, you can actually one-shot them. I do you, do you guys know the main reasons why? I think it's one player that is so cracked that he's popping up on those champions, and it's Kiss. Kiss on Lux and Kiss on Cannon actually changed my mind about how good these champions can be in the mid lane because i've never seen good players on these two champions but kiss is just so good that he makes these two champions work and i actually feel like a good lux can be really really good but the the only downside i see is just her her one versus one matchup 
she's she she will struggle against a few one on matchups, and her roaming isn't that great because she lacks mobility as well. So, but if you dominate your lane, and you kind of have like a coverage in the early game where people will just uh provide vision for you, and then later team fights like. Lux excels if you have vision control because then she can catch people and just one shot them. And in team fights, if you can catch people beforehand and the ultimate cooldown is super low, you can just one shot someone before the team fight. And then uh, during the team fight, you will have your ultimate up again. And it does a lot of damage. Actually, if you land one good bind, you just carry team fights because you just one shot one or two people. <laughs> Got my nose. Next one, Seraphine. Um, the main reasoning I don't like Seraphine is because of her bad roaming. That's that's the main reason. Like I feel like she will she struggles against a lot of matchups. She lacks mobility and she has super bad roaming factor. So other people would just um, roam more. But obviously, yeah, she has the ultimate, which is pretty good in team fights. The same applies for Sona. Same explanation, but worse. Why do I have a star? Because Seraphine's ultimate is better than Sona's ultimate, so she provides more value uh, as a as a utility like with a utility factor and the damage she provides in teammates than the Sona. Plus, Sona is very very scaling, very scaling, and I feel like she lacks mobility. She's easy to punish and easy to kill, and uh, no roaming. That's the main reason I put her C tier. Next one, ADC. Okay, guys, speed running, speed running through the remaining part of the tier list because we, I don't know how long the video is, but I feel like we are at the one hour already. I feel like I'm talking the whole time. My my voice is kind of dying at this point. Okay, for you guys wondering why I put S3 as plus tier, there is a condition and is high elo. High elo S3 is S plus tier in other ranks S tier. Okay, don't mind me. And the main reason is Chronix and Doom. I think mainly because I I've seen Doom and he has like a 17 or 18 win streak on Asriel in high elo. And then Chronix. I've played against Chronix during the push to Legend. I don't know how many times I played against him, more than 20 times. And I've played like 10 times against this Asriel. And this Asriel is a pain in the ass. He just pokes you down. He has too much mobility. In every game, he will. Scale, outscale you. Because Ezreal is one of those champions who has great self peel, tons of poking damage, and insane scaling. Did I mention scaling already? I mentioned scaling already. But yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Uh, people, uh, like games, always get into the late game, and he's so fantastic in team fights because he, he ju she just chunks you down. He just chunks you down, and it's hard to kill him. The main reason I had him lower is um, because he doesn't carry as hard in the early game, but uh, like in the early game he's weak, but three items as real. Sayonara. It's so hard to deal against a good as real. It's so hard. But in lower ranks you probably don't have the time. Like if you get snowballed hard, uh, get if you get snowballed on too hard, you don't have the time to scale. But in high elo, this this champion is S plus hundred uh, percent. Next one, Vayne. Same exp uh, the explanation is strong duelist, insane amount of damage, insane amount of mobility. Sire, strong damage has root, has self peel, hard to kill. The ultimate and the roots, very hard to kill. Lucian, tons of damage, tons of mobility. Caitlyn, very easy to play champion, tons of range in the early game. Lame bully. And very consistent ADC overall. Kaisa, um, strong hyper carry ADC, uh, strong in every stage of the game, has firstly tons of damage in the 1 vs 1, has attack speed plus mobility plus invisibility, and has the ultimate for shield plus reposition. Next one, Tristana. Tristana got the buffed, and the girl is finally actually really, really strong, does a lot of damage in the early game. Um, not the greatest, obviously, but the moment you have three items, three items, Tristana, Sayonara, one versus one, actually really strong against other ADCs, because her ultimate does a lot of damage. You pop the third ability, you jump on them, first ability, pop, 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 ultimate, boom, one shot. 
Actually, 1 vs 1 Tristana are really good. And the moment you get resets, you can just catch people left and right. But yeah, her early game is definitely weak, obviously. Still weak. Dude, my nose. I don't know what's happening. Sorry, guys. Varus got buffed as well. Actually, a huge buff on Varus, uh, making him a poke beast. Uh, I still don't feel like he is S plus tier. Um, mainly... Because, yeah, I think in competitive, he would be a very fantastic pick. But I feel like in solo queue, not. Um, lack of mobility and uh, lack of self-peer. Yes, you have the ultimate for peer, but that's about it. And you rely on your teammates to either provide enough tank, uh, enough frontline, or you have an enchanter that's peer, peers you really well. But yeah, fantastic poke damage overall. Um, Draven. I know Doom Doom put Draven S plus tier. Um but I feel like it's an S tier champion. My opinion is yes, Draven is a super strong laning like in the early game he's super strong. He has great snowballing factor and he can carry games really really hard. But he lacks mobility and it's not that hard to kill him in comparison to other ADCs. And he is hard to play. Mainly high skill ceiling champion. I think for the average person. Popping up on Draven is not that easy, and carrying games on your own as Draven is not that easy, and dominating the laning, um, the laning phase one versus two is also not that easy as the Draven. So in my opinion, S tier. Corky overall pretty strong, does a lot of damage, has decent amount of mobility, and has the package in team fights. Jinx, uh, very similar explanation to uh, Tristana in the early game, not that strong, but. Hey, when you have enough core items, like 3 or 4 items, you get one reset, you can wipe the whole team and run them down and do so much damage. Jin, I think he's a solid laner, especially in the early game, he excels, does a lot of poke damage. But I feel like in the mid and late game, he falls off and doesn't provide as much damage and as much carry potential as the other ADCs. Plus, lack of mobility. Yeah, I feel like... If I play against a Jin, I'm like, okay, whatever, I can always kill him. If I'm a Camille, I'm playing against Jin, I feel like I can always kill him, it doesn't matter. But if I if I'm a Camille against Asriel, Vayne or Lucian, it's so hard to kill them. It is so hard to kill champions with high mobility. And they also do way more damage than a Jin. Ash overall solid laner. Um I feel like she's kinda weak in the early game. She lacks mobility, but she obviously has the ultimate. For some playmaking potential to catch people. Misfortune in the early game she is pretty strong. Uh, she has the ultimate which is fantastic in team fights, But she lacks mobility. And she falls off in the late game. Do not doing as much damage as other ADCs. Karma as ABC. Um, does a lot of damage. And does provide decent amount of utility. Lux APC. Um. Same explanation, kind of lacks mobility, but has the catch potential and has a lot of damage with her bind and with the ultimate. Both Orianna and Zix are overall really solid APCs that are fantastic in teamfight and provide a lot of damage. Um, but you need the right team comp to make those two champions work. And I feel like APCs are more like high elo picks than lower ranks. Brand. Um, doesn't have the same range and the same amount of damage, uh, plus lack of mobility. Morgana doesn't have the damage that I want to see from an APC. She's more like a utility poke champion. Senna. Senna as an ADC I think is kind of situational. You can make her work, but I feel like she's a super scaling champion that doesn't do as much damage than other ADCs. Um, and her early game is kind of weak. Akshan as ADC, I don't like it because he's short range and he will get bullied against a lot of other matchups. Vega is super super scaling, weak in the early game. I don't like him as an APC at all. Maybe I should remove these two champions next time because it, just don't play them. Don't play them Dragon Lane. Next one, support. Support, yes, Yumi finally got another nerf but I though don't think it matters. This champion is still... Broken as fuck. Um, mainly, why? She provides a shield, she provides AD and AP, 
she can just sit very freely on, let's say, she's on Olaf, on Shivana, on a vein or something. They will just hyper carry. If your ADC is not completely bad, in the late game, Yumi plus ADC or Yumi plus one of those hyper carry junglers, they will just carry the game super, super hard. Plus she has a lot of healing, plus she has the AoE ultimate that can rule people. Karma, tons of utility, tons of poke, tons of damage and amazing value in team fights. Gragas got buffed, so I just want to mention that he is really, really strong. But I don't think it's enough to put him into S plus tier, strong S tier. I mean, all of those champions are very similar, so I, I just want to summarize, okay? They are very similar playstyle champions. They are playmaking tanks that are very strong in teamfights. They can roam and catch people and um, snowball the game in the early game and then have so much value in teamfights because they have a utility and a lot of tankiness. Playmaking potential, high. Alistair, AoE knockup plus ultimate to become really tanky. Rakan, knockup plus, plus charm. Thresh, insane playmaking potential with the hook. He has the lantern to save people and the ultimate to slow people down. Plus the fling is really good with the protobal to catch people. Then Gregor's super tanky. The ultimate to catch people. The third ability to stun people. Then Nautilus got buffed as well. Um... Super tanky, has the root, has the ultimate to catch people, has the third ability to slow people down, and the second ability provides you with a lot of tankiness, gives you a huge shield that also does a lot of damage. That's a, that's the summary for those playmaking champions that I love to see. I think they are fantastic in the right hands to snowball the game, um, especially in high low, but even lower ranks you can snowball and carry those games. Uh, uh, make a lot of plays that might be able to snowball the game. Pike, underrated as a support. I think especially in lower ranks, he's fantastic at snowballing the game and catching people with his hooks left and right, roaming around. Um, but obviously the downside is you are, you need a tank when you play this champion or you have like a super high poke. Uh, crowd control team comp like uh, with a Lux Vega or whatever But yeah overall uh, if you play a pike you want some sort of front line uh, normally Then we have Nami and Lulu who are amazing enchanters Nami with a lot of playmaking potential with the bubble to knock off knock up multiple people has strong early game with a poking uh, poking ability that can also heal your allies and provide attack speed if i'm not wrong plus the ultimate to knock multiple people up fantastic peeling enchanter lulu not necessarily amazing peeler but she can boost your adc or one of those hyper carry junglers uh, with the shield uh, with the attack speed and the movement speed making them super 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 strong plus the ultimate to um, make the target bigger give them more HP and slow the allies down Now Jenna Jenna in I think in high elo she is better than Nami and Lulu even as an enchanter But in lower lower ranks. I think she is more like an A tier But why do I think she's actually so good? Because she has so much mobility to roam around and make plays happen. She has the tornado to peel, she has the ultimate to peel, and the second ability to poke people down in the early game. A strong laning phase, super super strong laning phase. Um, the second ability gives a movement speed as well out of combat. Then the third ability gives a shield to slow, uh, I mean the a shield plus AD on uh, your ally. Leona, a strong champion. A uh, strong champion against enchanters. Uh, the downside is kind of that she is single target. In comparison to the other playmaking uh, tanks. Uh, the next one, Galio. Galio, um, I feel like his combos are harder to pull off than uh, the others. But he's definitely a strong, um, strong support as well. Plus he's kind of situation where I feel like he works better. If the opponent has a lot of AP damage, because then his second ability gets even more value. Because the second ability provides him 
with magic damage reduction. Next one, Rome. Rome also very similar to uh, Leona, where the first stun is single target. And it's not an immediate stun because you need three hits on it first. He has the he has a pretty good he has a pretty good situation to pick where if they have a lot of poke his shield value is really good then um, S tier but overall usually A tier the ultimate good playmaking uh, ability that can knock multiple people up for peeling or for engaging next one Blitzcrank Blitzcrank received a buff where they reduced the cooldown of his first ability I think the main reason why I don't like Blitzcrank is because there are too many bad Blitzcrank players that don't know how to play this champ correctly and they can't land the hooks. If you are good at landing hooks, you can, um, yeah, you can carry games, sure. Um, because you can pick off key targets, but... I feel like he's just a high skill ceiling champion. You need to land the hooks. If you don't land the hooks, you're useless. And you need to be able to roam around and catch people as well. He is just not that easy to play in comparison to like, okay, I'm Alistair, I'm jumping in, I'm stunning multiple people, and then I'm using my ultimate. Easy. A Blitzcrank, you need to pick off people before a teamfight even happens. I played Blitzcrank twice. One game, I was doing really, really well, just picking off people left and right. And the other game, even when I was picking off people left and right, uh, we still end up losing the game. Because at the end of the day, the only thing you have is just a one hook. That's it. And then you have the ultimate that can silence people, okay, sure, but you don't provide as much crawl control and uh, tankiness than other other tanky playmaking champions. Soraka, decent enchanter that doesn't provide as much uh, peeling, but she has some nice healing. So situational pick uh, into the right team comp, uh, you can make her work. Luck support, actually uh, pretty solid. Damage dealing support. That has a shield as well and a decent amount of peeling with a bind. She's more like those um, carry carry supports that have a lot of damage on their own. But you want to pick her when you have enough frontline on your own as well already. Same explanation for like a Sona or for Seraphine. They they have less damage, but they provide more utility. But you definitely always want more. Uh, you want to pick them when you have uh, enough frontline already. Any. I think in the early game she's kind of weak. She doesn't provide peeling for the ADC really. But she has great um, playmaking potential with Protobot Ultimate for example. Next one, Chen. I just feel like this champion is not that good as a support. Because you are not that tanky and the only thing you have is your ultimate pretty much. Uh, I mean the taunt pretty much. Early game really really weak. Because if you play against a... I feel like you can never move up if you play... Let's for example say you play against Nami Lucian or against a Janna plus another ADC. They will just poke you down. They they will poke you down and you need to hard engage with a taunt to trade. Okay, set. Same explanation. We, like, I just don't feel like you can make those champions work really consistently. In uh, lower ranks especially. I see... Set sometimes being played by some pro teams, but they they have the right synergy where they can catch people and play super aggressive. But I just don't feel like this champion is that tanky when you play him as a support because you lack the gold. Singed in the early game really, 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 really weak, but he's like more like a cheesy pick against enchanters where you want to pick them off with a proto build, maybe later on in the third ability. Uh, super strong scaling though, to be fair. Morgana um, doesn't provide really that much as a support. The, the only thing you provide is like uh, a little bit of utility by binding people and uh, harassing them with a poke. But if you don't land the bind, you're completely useless. Senna as a support, I think she can be really solid uh, if you pick her into the right team comp. And people should realize when I talk, like, I was, I was memeing, I was memeing Senna as F tier mainly because there are so many bad Senna players and they're like, why are you flaming, uh, flaming the champion Senna? No, I'm flaming the players that are playing Senna and are super selfish. There are so many uh, Senna players that are first picking Senna 
and forcing the others into a team comp to fit the Senna. Senna is a champion that only fits into certain team comps where you have enough frontline, either you have enough frontline to make her work, or you play her with the Nasus, with the Gragas, or Galio, then sure, okay, she works. Um, but there are so many Senna players that are going full crit Senna, and then you have double ADC without the frontline. These are the type of Senna players that are, I don't like, and they, don't, they, they can't even land the bind on top of that, and then inting. These are the Senna players that I don't like, but if you, if you pick this champion into the right team comp, she can be fantastic. That's why she's working in uh, competitive as well, because they build the right team comp to make Senna work. But in solo queue, a lot of times, you won't have the right team comp to make a Senna pick work. Because sometimes you have an assassin in the jungle, you have double ADC now, and then you're also building crit Senna. Huh? Come on, you're just inting. Amumu support, not good. Malfoy support, not good. Mundo support, not good. Pantheon support super cheesy. I, I talk I talk I, I wanna summarize this super quickly because I, I feel like I'm talking way too long already. So the big changes or the big the big player on this new patch is definitely Gragas. Gragas is so fantastic right now. Um he was already an S tier champion, but they made him they overbuffed him. Then we have Kasadin, who is still fantastic, is still broken even though he got nerfed. And then also ADC, finally Tristana getting the buff that she deserves and she's really, really solid right now. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this tier list. Make sure to check out the link for Red Magic down below in the comments. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe and write down below in the comments your feedback, what champions you think are uh, really strong on this patch right now and what champions you think are bad right now. But yeah, that's coming for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, uh, enjoyed it and i see you next time. Bye bye. Fire spreading all around my room My world's so bright It's hard to breathe But that's alright